Alright, so Debian 11 came out. Uh, it's been a while since Debian 10, but they've come up with a new version, nicknamed it Bullseye. I've read through their summary, and they've added a few things. Uh, a printing protocol change, they've added uh, something called PPUSB, IPPUSB, that's the name. And uh, that, I guess, helps with printers that have standardized uh, communication over USB. And there's a few things related to medicine over here. I'm not going to say the name of the virus, because I'm not allowed to mention it or get demonetized. And they've also also updated a bunch of packages like PHP, it's now 7.4, and all these other things. So that's all good, both for uh, security and functionality. Uh, but now let's take a look at a virtual machine with Debian 11 that I've booted up over here. This is the net install. We're going to do the graphical install. We're going to take a look at how they've changed that experience and how Debian has generally modified it for this 11 version. All right, here we are in the language selection. I'm already English, that's pretty good. Uh, United States. Now I'll, I'll choose other and then go to Asia and then. And Dubai should be here. Uh, where is it? Somewhere. Okay, UAE. Yeah, that's good. Uh, United States locale. Key map to use. American English. That's good. Waiting for all this stuff to load. The installer is similar to Debian 10, but they've changed the color palette. I like this new color palette they're going for with the... They've added this funky blue instead of the red and uh, horrifying old computer plastic yellow that Debian used to have. This sort of shakes it up now. Now they got this retro blue going on. Host name, I'll just call it uh, Alex Debian. Sure. A domain name, don't need for that. Root password, 1234. Very secure. <laughs> Don't use that in real life. Full name for your user, just say Denshi. Username, Denshi, sure. Password, 1234. Configuring the clock and everything. So the install seems to be the same as Debian 11, but it seems a little faster. Maybe it's just the VM. Here's the partitioning. Uh, I'll just use the entire disk. I won't do any manual partitioning. It's pretty good. Uh, all files in one partition, sure. Just to make it a little faster. Or not really, but to make the partitioning process faster. Uh, this is all looking good. Got a root partition and a one gig swap partition. That's all good. Oh, wait, sorry. Finished partition. Yeah, they really got to fix this, huh? This is a really weird installer with this whole, like, selecting text over here. Ideally, they should do it in a better way, I think. But whatever, it works. Uh, right changes to disk. Sure. All right. Installing the base system. Yeah, that's going to download all the packages. Wow, that was a really, really fast download. Uh, Debian... Uh, mirrors are sort of all over the world. Must have been really, really good servers. All right, it's asking to scan external media for proprietary components. Uh, I don't know if they've made getting Debian ISOs easier. That's one thing they should really improve. The install experience, the whole Debian website experience, it's so antiquated, or not even antiquated, but just, just poorly designed. They could just put download links in a page. They don't have to do this whole complex thing where you have to go through an FTP server just to find the ISO you're looking for. If you want to find a non-free ISO of Debian, it takes a while to look for the one that you're looking for. But anyways, let's just continue over here. I'm not going to add that in. Mirrors, I'll just try to find one in a near country. Deb.debian.org, that's a good one. HTTP proxy, nothing. And now I guess it's going to scan the mirror and start downloading everything, so I'll, I'll give it a second. All right, so it's asking for the popularity contest. I'm going to say no to that because I don't want any kind of telemetry in my system. One thing I really respect about Debian is the fact that they keep all of their regular repositories, the default repositories, completely free software, which is great if you're running a server. It means that everybody who's using it can 100% know, yes, you're only using free software because I'm using Debian or a different distribution that ships only free software. The only thing is, is that, of course, if you're going to be using Debian on a laptop or even many desktop computers, you're going to have to install proprietary components at some point. Anyways, it appears to be asking for a desktop environment. I'm going to untick these. I don't want any of this. What I'm going to do is install GNOME because I know they've updated the version of GNOME in Debian 11. They've gotten GNOME 3.38, I believe. There's GNOME 40 nowadays, which is probably just should be named GNOME 4, but they decided to update it 3.38. So I want to take a look at how that looks because they always style and theme things with Debian. I'm curious of how they integrated this new funky blue into their aesthetic. All right, so it's done installing the packages. Now it wants the grub bootloader, and I guess I'll install it because you certainly need that to boot up. That's the one, Dev SDA. And give it a second, and it should be done. All right, installation is complete. I like this little eye they got here, this stylized Debian blue eye. Installation is complete. Now it's time to boot into your new system. Let's let's take a look at our system. Let's uh, reboot and take a look at that. There's the Grub bootloader, also customized with the new Debian blue. They got Linux 5.10 in this. Also quite a modern version of the kernel. That's nice. Kernel is important to update for security reasons, of course. All right, loading up uh, systemd here, and we should be in GNOME soon. Here we are, my account, Denshi, uh, my password, 1234, very secure password. Well, here we are in uh, GNOME 3.38. Uh, 
Let's take a look at what they added. They've styled it with their custom little uh, thing over here. Got their wallpaper. And uh, I think they, they include, I don't know why, but they include all these games. And I think if you go through here, you'll find there's like LibreOffice and other things. Yeah, there you go, LibreOffice right there. This appears to just be your regular run-of-the-mill GNOME installation and not really much has changed. Oh wait, they include Synaptic now? Oh, that's new. I didn't know they added that. Look at that. Synaptic. Software on your system is organized in so-called packages. Oh, they even like a little exp they got like a little explanation. I've never used Synaptic before. Never never thought they would add this sort of stuff. They even have categories. That's very nice. Uh, can it show the stuff that I've installed? Uh, let's see. Oh, here we are. Status. Install. Yeah, how many packages is that? Seems like, uh, quite a few. Quite a few hundred, if not a thousand or so. But anyways, that was Debian 11. The big differences here are, of course, those updated packages and kernels and this weird new Debian blue that are, they're going on, they're going for. Uh, but the main thing people are going to be using this for is, of course, servers. And when it comes to servers, it's very important to keep your security up to spec. So if you want to be using all the latest features, but also have some large base of support, then I guess Debian 11 is something to try out. I run Debian 10 on one of my servers, and I probably will update it at some point in the future once I migrate everything over, to, and hopefully nothing breaks. With Debian, that happens sometimes. You set something up like with PHP, and then what happens is you try to update or change the packages, and then everything just completely breaks. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video of taking a look at Debian 11. There wasn't really much different here from Debian 10 besides this aesthetic change and a few other things. I'll, I'll be sure to cover any further Debian news if anything else comes out. Maybe there's like some security issues. They audited it very, very well, so I don't think there's going to be any problems. But anyways, I have been Denshi. This was Debian 11. Goodbye.